Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, Curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're on board the Battleship USS Texas, and we are below her armored belt to inspect some of her nuts. It's true, everything is bigger in Texas. So, these nuts right here are what are holding the armored belt onto the ship. So this is the backing plate right here. Notice all of the riveting, which significantly more than you see on later battleships where New Jersey has a considerable amount of welding. And then you can see the nuts that are holding the armored belt to this backing plate. On Battleship New Jersey, you can't see this because there's a cap welded over it. The reason New Jersey has that is there was concern that if something hits this bolt and this uh, shears off, well now this becomes a projectile. The armor belt has stopped what's shot at you, but this is now a projectile inside the ship. And this room on Texas is a birthing space. So that could cause all sorts of problems. So on New Jersey, you've got that nice big round cap covering this. Well, I'm not sure why that is actually. There aren't any instances I can think of where American battleships are hit, uh, which would have caused these to shear off that would make them decide, hey, we've got to weld a cap over that. Although it could just be the fact that it's welded, which is something, again, used significantly more with Iowa class battleships than with older battleships like this that are riveted. You can't really easily rivet a cap over all of these. The other thing is many of the spaces which have the armored belt back to them were coal bunkers as originally built. So their space is something like 20 feet wide that would have been filled with coal and that forms part of the defense of the ship. Something hitting here is not gonna cause any significant spalling or these bolts to shear off to go anywhere because all that coal is gonna catch it. So when they replace the coal bunkers, and turn it into birthing spaces. Oh shoot, this space is now full of guys. Why don't they cover this up or protect it in any way? There's not gonna be anyone in here in combat. During general quarters, none of these guys are in these birthing spaces. They've all gone to their general quarters spaces somewhere else on the ship. So th there's no real concern here. Although about this far aft in the ship where we're adjacent to turret five's barbette, the belt has gotten significantly thinner. It's only about six inches. As built, this is an external belt as opposed to the Iowa classes. Uh, and it is a flat belt, not an angled one, like on the Iowa. So it, 12 inches has the equivalence of 12 inches. So that's roughly enough to stop a 14 inch projectile as it's plunging down. The ship uh, did receive modifications that turned part of this exterior belt somewhat internal. In the 1920s, they added torpedo blisters along the side of the ship to form torpedo defense. And so those blisters gave you a layer of plating outside of this. It doesn't really increase the armor thickness against incoming projectiles, but it does help against torpedoes, something that uh, Battleship Texas wasn't really armored against, at least not modern, like World War II era torpedoes. Another interesting, uh, addition here are these two big 440 voltage cables. This is the degaussing system running around the uh, side of the ship here. Uh, interestingly, it's only got two coils on Texas, whereas New Jersey that was built with it has three coils called M, F, and Q. Uh, so many ships you go and you'll see th a bundle of three of these running around uh, in roughly this position. Texas was the last American battleship built before the all or nothing armor scheme, which starts with USS Nevada and ends with the Iowa class battleships functionally. Older battleships like Texas have armor plating of different thickness, uh, trying to cover basically the, the whole hull of the ship so that smaller shells being fired at you, which are more likely to hit if you're at a range where they can, um, are gonna be stopped. Well, by USS Nevada built one ship after Texas and then on through the Iowas, they decided that 
The important stuff will be armored with a pretty standard thickness. The belt's not gonna go from 12 inches to six inches along the length of the hull and then thinner after this armored bulkhead. It will either be a 12 inch belt or whatever the case may be. Nevada had, I think, 13 or 13.5, uh, or it will be nothing. And the spaces with no armor also have nothing important. Who cares if that gets shot up and flooded and whatnot? All of the reserve of buoyancy is inside the armored part of the ship. This also means you're not wasting a bunch of weight along the length of the hull, which was an issue for the US Navy because Congress dictates the weight of the next class of battleships. And they'll usually only give the Navy an incremental weight increase with each class uh, or no increase at all, which means the Navy has to get real creative with how they're going to um, modify their class to be better each successive year to keep up with the trends in other nations' battleship designs. This serves the Navy well because then the Washington Naval Treaty comes out, which also caps battleship design, and most of the countries of the world adopt an all or nothing armor scheme at that point as a weight saving measure. I don't believe these caps that Battleship New Jersey has versus what Texas doesn't have was ever actually tested in combat. It may have been some of the tests conducted on captured battleships like Austriesland or uh, canceled battleships like Washington that proved the need for additional armor, but then American battleships don't really get into uh, first-rate slugging matches where the enemy has a fair shot of hitting them. Both U.S. Navy uh, battleship engagements, basically the, the enemy fleet doesn't even know the Americans are there until uh, th that the American battleship that's shooting at them, at least, doesn't even know they're there until they're already shot to pieces. And so American battleships don't really take a lot of fire from enemy projectiles, certainly not large caliber enemy projectiles. So do you think those caps were needed, or do you think they're wasted weight on a treaty battleship? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you'd like to find out more about Battleship Texas, there's a link in the description below to their YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. If you would like to support somebody, there's a link below to Battleship Texas's donate page. They need a lot of funding as they're about to go into a major dry docking period to restore the ship for decades to come. And they would really appreciate your support. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.